Good evening, Seaborn Ventures guests, and welcome aboard as we embark on this fantastic voyage. Tonight, we leave the beautiful city of Ushuaia. And make our way across the Drake Passage. As we sail on to Antarctica. Hi, I'm Will Wagstaff, one of the Ventures team here on uh, Seaborne Venture, and we're here on Dano Island. This is Mickelson Harbour all around us, Trinity Island up behind, and the mainland peninsula out that way. And for the first time this season, we're actually seeing a whole lot of the peninsula. It's nice with a bit of blue sky, and we're seeing all that wonderful white background. Normally I'm talking about birds and that works really well here because you've got all the Gen 2 penguins here and the usual few predators as well, there's skewers around, the odd pair of sheath bill running back and forth as well. It's an area that is a really good introduction to Antarctica so for our first landing, what a great place to be. Good morning and welcome to Des Moines Point on a beautiful sunshine day. My name is Peter Damish. I'm a general naturalist and historian for Seaborn and I've been working with them for over nine years. And today we have a fantastic opportunity to see a broad spectrum of operations from beautiful mountains that cover us on both sides of Doomer Island and Wenke Island and across the ridgeline a whole set of fantastic penguin colonies. The chicks are just starting to grow up. I call them teenagers starting to run around just a little bit more independent from their parents. In addition, we've got the historic site monument behind me. It's a British Antarctic survey hut, and it represents one of less than 100 historic site monuments recognized by international treaty in this enormous continent that's 40% bigger than Europe or the United States. So we've had a great opportunity to see penguin behavior. We've seen skuas working and predation on those behaviors. We've got hikes across the snow and ice. We've got beautiful sunshine. We've got mountains and we've got a historic site. You can't ask for a better combination than that. As soon as the submarine starts descending where the waves stop having an impact on the submarine, there's silence. And then it's just like if I'm in outer space. It's absolutely amazing. When we see the bottom, that's when everybody just takes a big gasp and they're like, oh, wow, what is that? That is a part of the world no one potentially may have ever seen before. It's like always a little bit of a kick when you find a wall or a slope on your sonar for the first time, and then you want to go closer and closer and closer. Until you turn on the lights and make a spectacle out of it. There's a school of fish around us and they just kind of looked at us. We just kind of looked at them. And it was interesting just staring at them. <laughs> the only sad part is that when I'm there, time really flies.
As we venture on with our Antarctic voyage, we make our way through the Le Maire Channel. A narrow valley with incredible mountains surrounding it. You cannot help but feel impressed by the sheer size, making our own worlds feel so small in comparison. It is a truly mesmerizing, breathtaking experience, one that we won't soon forget. When we reach Port Charcot, the atmosphere changes. And Antarctica gives us our first glimpse of how dramatic the landscape and wildlife can really be. Arrival at Arthur Harbor. We are greeted with abundant wildlife all around. Good morning, welcome to Cooperville Island. We're here with 4,000 pairs of Gentoo penguins. We have everything from molting adults to the chicks that are just about to fledge, just about to leave their parents and head out into the water on their own. And we also have some very young chicks that just hatched, but uh, skuas have come down and started to prey on them. Circle of life here on Cooperville. We have beautiful scenery around us, a perfect setting here to watch a bunch of Gentoo penguins do what they do.
as busy as the wildlife can be. There are some times when things just slow down. And it can feel, if only for a brief moment, like time stops. As our expedition continues, we stop by for a beautiful landing at Brown Bluff. Covered by a fresh dusting of snow, Mother Nature was showing off at her very best. Although we try our best to plan our close encounters, sometimes something unexpected comes along, making for another special moment. My name is Seb Colfard. I am a submarine pilot on board Seabourne Venture. And today we're here at Elephant Island, just off the coast of Point Wild. Elephant Island is a location associated with one of the brightest pages in the heroic age of polar history. It is here in 1916, where Sir Ernest Shackleton and a party of 27 men were marooned ashore after the loss of their ship, Endurance. Sir Ernest Shackleton decided that he would have to organize his own rescue mission. So he took to sea in a lifeboat. 
He sailed to South Georgia, about 830 miles away, and amazingly, after a four-month epic mission, he returned to save 22 men. As we say our goodbyes and prepare to leave Antarctica, we're greeted with the most incredible farewell party like no other before. After saying our goodbyes to Antarctica, we made our way across the Drake Passage. And we have now arrived at our first destination on the second half of our voyage. Welcome to the Falkland Islands. As we touch down in the Falklands, there's an immediate shift in tone. Instead of the cold air, icy blues, and grand mountains, the Falklands is warmer, greener, and more flat. But it still knows how to show off for us in the next chapter of our adventure.
For our second landing, we arrive at Baron Island. Now we're understanding the Falklands more and realize that as harsh as the landscape is, there's just as much beauty to be found. After two weeks, we have our first step back into true civilization again. A welcome sight in the small city of Stanley. As the end of our journey together nears, there's still a few more surprises to be had along the way. This is Eric with the Seaborne Venture Expedition Team. 
We are here this morning at Saunders Island, out in the wild, rugged northwest of the Falklands. It is a gorgeous morning, maybe the best morning of weather we've had so far. Four types of penguins, all in uh, one landing, lots of Gen 2 and Magellanics. A few rock hoppers here and there, and of course, what everyone was very excited about this morning, some lovely king penguins, and that's not to mention all of the other wildlife. And we had a lovely display of dozens of dolphins playing and riding in the surf on the north shore of the island. Time for a steep hike up to some uh, albatross perhaps, or a nice walk along the beach here on the North Shore. This kind of experience doesn't get old. So for our final morning of expedition operations in the Falklands, having this nice weather probably gives everyone a chance to relax, to kind of zoom out. It's not going to be too long before we don't get to stretch our legs amongst a bunch of penguins and albatross. Over the past 21 days, we have traveled across thousands of nautical miles and ventured into areas of the world that may never have been seen before. We have experienced rare natural wonders, surrounded ourselves with great history, and made some invaluable memories of our own. Now we take those memories with us as we continue on our own separate voyages, sailing on and looking forward to what future adventures may lie ahead. <laughs>